Man, this is a nice view. I'm fucking digging this. Whew. Hey, Judas. How you doing? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Jaquel, the world's worst YouTuber. I realize that in this position, I'm very small, so let me get a little bit closer. Some people might not be aware, but once upon a time, I actually did shows. I actually am a guitar player. I'm a vocalist. I sing, scream, and I do a little bit of throat singing. A little bit. I'm not super advanced with it. But point is, I've actually done shows before. Didn't really get anywhere, didn't really go very far, but I had a lot of fun. So, I wanted to go through the motions with you and show you how I got ready for a show. So, one of the first things I always concerned myself with for some reason was the wardrobe. What was I going to wear that episode? What was the crowd going to be like? What was going to be my demographic? He was trying to climb my leg. No big deal. What was I going to wear for the show? Because for me, I've always had this identity crisis with my clothing. I wasn't allowed to wear the clothes that I wanted to because it was too rock and roll when I was growing up. So, if I am dressed well, if I look good, if I like my reflection in the mirror, I don't feel as self-conscious. So I draw my power from my presentation, because at the end of the day, you're not just selling music. You are selling your performance. That's what a live show is about. So you set the stage, you set your example by what you're wearing, and everybody else will set the tone from there even if they've never heard your music before. Because frankly, in today's society, as much as I might dislike it and despise it entirely, looks matter. So let's choose our outfit for this particular show. and looking good in on stage. And you know what? It doesn't have to be something that other people are going to think looks good. Something that you think you look good in and will help provide you with confidence and empowerment. I like wearing stuff like this. This is my style of clothing that I like to wear whenever. So I'm comfortable and I'm going to be comfortable on stage. If you want to dress up like the Green Power Ranger? By all means. I've seen them. I've seen people do it. Hey, whatever floats your boat, man. But now we move on to the next important thing. And that is accessories. Alright, so when I say accessorize practically, this is sort of what I mean. I'm a guitar player. I also sweat a lot profusely, something I've lived with and dealt with my entire life. So, 
I want to make sure that I am also dressing in a stylish fashion that doesn't clash with what I'm going with, but also fits the needs, looks good, and is practical. Example, I'm a guitar player. This is my picking hand. I don't want my arms sliding all over the place as I'm sweating, and I don't really, if, if I can prevent damage from the high levels of magnesium in my sweat, eroding the finish on the paint job of my guitar, I'm going to try and reduce the amount of sweat coming off of this arm. So, got a nice thick wristband here. Uh, got it from a Blackstone Cherry Show, because I like metal, but I also like hard rock. So, bite me. They put on a good show, though. Now, you'll see a lot of uh, rock stars in the just flat-out heavy metal genre wearing the longer wristbands like that, as opposed to the thinner wristbands. Don't know why, but it fits the style, so you know you're not missing anything. But like I said, I sweat a lot. I got the Punisher right here. And, you know, I'm not really that big a fan of the Punisher, but it's a skull. Skulls are metal, right? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to bring it up here on my arm. That way I got just a little bit of, a little bit more absorption, and I got a little bit more protection from my own sweat on my guitar. So now, it looks somewhat stylish. I'm stage ready, and it's helping with the sweat. Another thing, most of the sweat that bothers me comes from my forehead. Ever since I was young, age 12, 13, I noticed that this was a thing, especially since I had recently learned that I really enjoyed bicycles. So I was riding my bicycle wherever I like. So I adopted the practice of wearing a bandana. I always at least have two to three bandanas in my possession at all times. Because you never know when you might break a sweat. So, allow me to demonstrate exactly how it is I fold my bandana. Now, if you wear the same bandana frequently over and over, it might not be in the same shape it once was, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be. All you need to do is make sure that these two points are coming together, and now you're making a triangle. And see, here's kind of what I was talking about here. Because of use and wear and tear, the bandana has been stretched out a little bit. So it's not going to fold perfectly. Let's see if I can get it just a little bit better. See, there's still going to be just a little bit of unevenness right there. But you know what? We're just going to make that the inside, the side that's touching our head. Now, you notice how you got the Paisley Design teardrops here. What I like to do is I like to take this top corner and bring it up to that top one right there. So it's going to be pretty much touching the edge of the bandana. Now you also want to try and make sure that you've got a nice, as even as possible, trapezoid shape going on. Now, something that I have noticed in the past as well is if you don't fold it properly, this fun little corner right here is going to hang out and dangle in your face and you're going to look like a fucking goober. So to prevent that, I fold this up up here. Now, there's two main ways that you can fold this bandana. The way that I used to do it would be, I'd take it and fold it to 
about midway. Now I bring it down, and there you go. Got a nice, perfectly folded bandana. However, how I've been doing it more recently, especially with my hair that's been growing out, I like to take it just a little bit differently. I bring it up here. And now you want to make sure that there's just a little bit hanging off the end because that needs to cover up the other side. That way it doesn't look like you got seams flopping out all over the place. Now why in the hell is this so much fatter than this? <sighs> Hang on. What, just one second, okay? All right, now, you see, got our bandana, nice, and set up, and decently folded. You got some of that color splash on the side, but you're also making sure that you're as gang neutral as possible. I know that there's a lot of criminal gangs out there that fold their bandanas a certain way. I've noticed in my experience that this is one of the most neutral foldings that you will find and you will remain neutral as not to piss off any gang members. Also unless you're clearly representing another gang, a real gangbanger probably isn't going to bother you, regardless of how your bandana is. Regardless, you always want to stay safe. Alright y'all, we about to get real up close and personal. I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack and people who might talk a lot of shit. If you're going to wear makeup, you only want to use two things, if that. First and foremost, black nail polish. You want something that's a quick dry, I like the Rimmel London dries in 60 seconds. But whatever works, works, as long as it's black. But if you want to color your fingernails in some other color, be, be my guest, by all means. Black matches the aesthetic, though. And the other thing... Eyeliner. I tend to prefer the uh, retractable eyeliners, not the pencil. And this is liquid. I hate it, but it's all I've got right now. Let's see if I don't black out my eye. If it happens, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't know, you want to try and get the eyeliner on the watermark, which is that nice, thin, fleshy part where it's not the eye, where <sighs> it's not inside the eye lid, but it's not the eyelashes either. But let me tell you what, you get this stuff, in your eye, it sucks. First time it happened to me, I thought I was going blind. No, no, it just sucks. Oh, oh, there we go. It's blacked out. I promise it wasn't on purpose. The cool thing about it is your eye will naturally produce tears and get it out. Your whole freaking eyeball will have some somewhat of that emo days. Smoky eye effect. That's what. That's the word I was looking for. Smoky eyed. Uh, so I, I, I'm gonna clean this up later.
There we go, that's a little bit better. Now for the other eye. Let me just speed through that one real quick and just go on. And yeah. This did not go as planned. All right. Oh no. My flap is showing. All right. Earrings. Always an essential. Unless your ears aren't pierced. But if your ears are pierced, use those holes, damn it. Use those holes. Can't find my hole. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Bye, George. I think we've done it. All right. There's one more step before the show ready. Fingernails. Yeah. Nailed it. Okay. Um, clearly, my right hand suffered because I'm right-handed and I was painting with my left hand. Yeah. But it's okay. Uh, there's ways to fix it and adjust it. So, I'm going to go do that real quick. And then we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. All right, now you're all dressed up. You got everything together. Got your hair, got your accessories, and the fingernail polish, and the really poorly done eyeliner. Now you need your instrument. And just, mm. oh, hey, cool. So naturally as one does, you need to make sure that everything is set and in tune. good we seem to be missing something our audience huh hang on we're still missing some that's more like it all right It's time to rock. Are you ready, kid? I said, are you ready? I will have to take that as a yes.
Alright everybody, thanks you guys for coming and watching my video. Now that I look completely effeminate and uh, the juice is completely ready for a nap, we're gonna go put him down for a nap. And find something to do with the stuffies. Alright. Till next time, much love, peace out, namaste, and goodbye. Yeah, man, it's been a while since the Crimson Lips broke up. Yeah, it's been a few years, man. The Crimson Lips, what does it mean? It, it, it's a euphemism. It's a euphemism, definitely. For what? Vagina. It's a euphemism for vagina. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. Yeah, man, no, I, I definitely, definitely got over my coke addiction, man. I mean, if you want, you can check my credit cards. I mean, if you really want, it helps you feel better about it. Yeah, go ahead. You mean I can't smoke in here? Bruh. That's fucking lame, dude. Fucking lame. Yeah. Oh, that's what Marty said, is it? That's what Marty said. You know what? You can tell Marty to shove it up his fu- Yes, I realize my titty is hanging out. I don't care that it's not flattering. I mean, what's the big deal about man titty anyway? It's not, man, it's not. Just fucking get over it. Oh, man. You mean, okay, my bad, man. You weren't kidding. Dude, what's, the, what's with the attitude? No. Gonna go outside and have a cigarette, and I'm calling my fucking agent. Oh, that's right, man. Marty, what's up, dude? 
Of course I know you're my fucking agent. Who else would you be? 